All right, welcome back. We are continuing our work on bills to get out before our committee shuts down. Morning committees will shut down very soon. So uh, Jen, thanks for coming back with us. Uh, we're working on two bills, 210 and 430. Um, <clears throat> how, much, how, how, many, how much is in 430 that we need to look at that's new? Uh, not a ton. I sent it to you last night. Yeah. Um, Committee, can we just go through that one and and finalize it? I think, and then let's we'll we'll really hash out a little bit more on H one twenty or S one twenty. I forget the number. Let me just four thirty. Let's go through it. Okay. Give me a second to pull that up. I'm sorry. Which one are we doing? The Doctor Dinosaur four thirty. Doctor the Doctor Doctor Dinosaur like. Let's go. Yes. We're going to call it the raptor. <laughs> exactly. Bill. The velociraptor. The something. Brontosaurus. All right. So this is H430. Um, it is an act relating to expanding eligibility for Dr. Dinosaur to all income eligible children and pregnant individuals, regardless of immigration status. At least that's its current title. Um, and so we looked at language yesterday. I have highlighted in blue, and I sent you this last night, um, the changes that I made in collaboration with Eva. This is not the language, sorry. Sorry, Nellie, I don't yeah, think I, don't I sent it to you. No, nope, I didn't send Nellie this one. All right. Um, you so want to go to me... 120 while we get that sort of set up? Um, How long will it take? Uh, well, I can put the language up on, I can send it to yeah. Nellie and then put the language up on the screen and Good. we can look at it while she's posting. Good. Sorry, Nellie. It should also be in your email. Just sent that to her. And putting it up. OK, now you have language in blue. Um, so this is H430. Again, it's the, the Dr. Dinosaur, Dr. Dinosaur-like coverage. Um, so what I've done here is add a new, uh, I've made this new subchapter two sections, with the first one being legislative intent. Um, and so this helps us really kind of make that connection to Dr. Dinosaur without, um, without raising the concerns Diva had about tracking the language in the program itself in a way that would require them to do a full Medicaid eligibility determination and um, denial first. So this has a new section, uh, Dr. Dinosaur-like coverage, legislative intent, and it says, in establishing Dr. Dinosaur-like coverage for children and pregnant individuals who are not eligible for the Dr. Dinosaur program because of their immigration status, it is the intent of the General Assembly that the hospital, medical, dental, and prescription drug benefits and eligibility criteria for the coverage set forth in Section 2092 of this chapter should align to the greatest extent practicable with the benefits and eligibility criteria of the Dr. Dinosaur program. Then we get into that coverage piece. So now we have the Dr. Dinosaur light coverage um, and the, the coverage. So again, we still have this term, including migrant workers who are employed in seasonal occupations. Um, and then we have AHS provide hospital, medical, dental, and prescription drug coverage equivalent to coverage in the Medicaid, Vermont Medicaid state plan. So that's what we have in this, for this population in Dr. Dinosaur. To the following categories of Vermont residents who have an immigration status for which Medicaid is not available and who are otherwise uninsured. So we have children under 19 years of age whose household income does not exceed the income threshold for eligibility under the Vermont Medicaid state plan and pregnant individuals whose household income does not exceed the income threshold for eligibility under the Medicaid state plan for coverage during their pregnancy and for postpartum coverage equivalent to that available under the Medi Vermont Medicaid state plan. Um, so this language is really trying to address the concern that was raised in the House about 
what happens if the eligibility income levels change in the doc regular Dr. Dinosaur program, or uh, there's an extension of the postpartum coverage for a year, which is an option that will be available to the state under the American Rescue Plan Act. So this ties the, the, the eligibility and that postpartum coverage um, and the benefits up here to what we have in the Vermont Medicaid state plan. So it's equivalent to, but it's not actually putting somebody on those programs. Does that make sense? Yes. Great. And then we have the language that we looked at in yesterday, which I've kept highlighted because the House committee has not officially seen it yet. So blue was what I added yesterday. Green was what you've already seen. That the confidentiality provision set forth in section 1902A of this chapter shall apply to all applications submitted and records created pursuant to this section, except that AHS shall not make any information about applicants or enrollees available to the US government. Then we have the, again, the agency can adopt rules to carry out the purposes. We have that 1.4 million in one-time funds with this language added here that the outreach and information would include, would be culturally and linguistically appropriate. And then we have a new second sentence, the outreach and information shall include information on the confidentiality of records pertaining to applicants and enrollees. And I think that that is it, other than the name change to an act relating to eligibility for Dr. Dinosaur-like coverage for all income eligible children and pregnant individuals, regardless of immigration status. Jen, just a quick question. Will that new um, title be reflected in that first paragraph? No, because this is what it is currently called. So it's after passage. After passage, it will be. Yes, okay. set, right. Um, now it may have the title change when it goes back over to the house. I, I'm not always entirely clear on when the house clerk and Senate secretary make those changes, but this lead in language refers to the bill that you received. Got and it. it does have that title. Okay, committee, other questions? Okay, um, and Nellie, I guess it must be up on our web page. It does so say it's posted. Refresh. There it is. So this is a strike all amendment to H430. Jen, I guess you can probably take it down unless someone has a question about specific language. That's good. Okay. Excellent questions. Okay. Well, it looks like we could um, act on this bill, H430. Um, this is a strike all amendment, H430, draft 2.2. Is that right, Jen? I believe so. I want to make sure I'm looking at the right number. I know. Yep, it's blue. <laughs> and so it'll stay the same. It doesn't change when you take the um, highlighting out. It does not need to. You haven't made any additional changes, so I will okay. just remove the highlighting. All right, good. All right, uh, committee, I would entertain a motion. I move passage of uh, draft number 2.2 .2 of H430. Okay, discussion? Okay, um, hearing none. Senator Terenzini. Thank you, Senator Lance. This is oh, why you get paid the big dollars. This is that extra thousand I was told. Yes, about, it right? is. Yeah, that's right. Still waiting for that, by the way. <laughs> Me too. Uh, I'll call the roll. Uh, start with myself. I will be uh, yes. I'll go with uh, Senator Hooker, please. Yes. Senator Cummings. Yes. Senator Hardy. Yes. Senator Lyons. Yes. I get a five to zero to zero. Okay, good. So um, I'm, I think I'll, I'd like to report this uh, unless there's a strong desire for uh, who hasn't.
Senator Hooker hasn't done a major bill yet. <laughs> I mean, it's up to you. Huh? I can't hear you. You just muted well, yourself. Unless Senator Hardy wants to do it. I don't know. Well, it's either me or you, because I, okay. I, 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 I would like to do it, but I'm happy to have you do it because you haven't done, uh, I don't think you did, the last one you did was S-22. Yep. And uh, you. now you're 46. doing age 46. Okay, I'm, I'm fine. That's okay. Good. Right. Thank you. Uh, I will send you this, the clean this copy, one, Senator. And I'll, I'll tell you why I wanted to do it. Thank you. Th thanks for doing that, Jen. Um, and thank you for your work on this bill. This, this has been a... This has been an interesting exercise for us. Uh, we haven't had the opportunity to look at undocumented folks uh, within the healthcare system. So this is great. Um, and I'll tell you why I did want to do it and, I, and why I feel supportive of it. And again, I may stand up and say something. And that is of the work that I've done over time with uh, undocumented workers and their families within the healthcare world. And um, so it's something important. Okay, so let's, in other languages, which <laughs> makes it even more fun. Um, all right, so let's go back to 120, please. And, and then uh, Senator Hooker, this one will definitely be going to appropriations. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I don't know, just FYI, I do not know what the discussion was. We had it on our list of bills up front. There was not money in the budget for this as it came from the House. So the, the Senate uh, Committee on Appropriations may, may or may not include it. But it's it's in, and I I would hope that the bill keeps uh, its integrity going forward and doesn't get co-opted. But you never know. Just that's a heads up. And I know here's what I'm thinking, uh, committee. If this one, if there's any problems with this one going forward, this is something now that we have and we can introduce or again next year. Can we do that, Jen? Can we introduce this as a bill? Um, potentially, I mean, it, yes, it, it, okay. it's already introduced, but I know. Okay. I mean, it already exists, but, but I think you could right. do it another one. Okay. All right. Let's go for the, let's do the S120. I haven't heard uh, the direction that this bill is going to take. Um, I sent, an, I have communicated with the pro tem about it, but we'll see. So S120. Okay, when we had stopped, we were looking at uh, the new, we just finished working on a new number two on the powers and duties. Okay, so we're looking at the same one, or did you do any updates on the to task force yet, or anything like that? I yes, I mean I have a working document going. I can put okay. it put that up if you want to look at it as we. Yes, I think it, that I because that. our time is getting short. Okay, and then we will work on it together. All right, so here is uh, what I had I changed to task force throughout, but I added at the end of powers and duties, the task force shall consider the following, keeping in mind the principles for healthcare reform enacted in Act 48 and codified at 18 BSA section 9371. Great. Does that work for folks? That looks good. Thanks, Jen. Great, sure. All right, and then we have this new number two, how Vermont's current healthcare system is impacting Vermont residents and businesses and their access to affordable healthcare. That is so good. Please. Thank you, Senator Cummings. <laughs> <laughs> and Jen. Okay. Great. All right. 
And then Okay. Oh, I see something that I keep forgetting to bring up. And it is, there are two things that okay. have been bugging me a little bit. One is I don't, I don't know how the task force gets together by July 1st. That, that's probably an impossibility given that they may not even be not identified. Nice. So, and then the other one is the number of meetings, eight, eight meetings beginning in September is, uh, I, I don't know how that happens. So I'm, I'm raising this as a, as a very practical concern. So on the beginning on or before September 15th, and then, I don't know, two or three months for eight meetings. And I actually dreamt about this one last night because it was, uh, I could see the, <laughs> the pressure to complete eight meetings in that period of time get, and knowing what any support people are going to have to do to make it happen. So I think there needs to be a different number in there. Let's start with that one. Um, I agree, Ginny. I center uh, lines. I, I think we need up to. How about what did you say, Ann? Up, up, up to eight. Let's make it up, up to eight meetings um, covering all set, all areas of the state. Well, why don't we say up to six? I mean, up to eight. If then you then you feel compelled. I'm just worried about the pressure that that whoever is guiding this group along is going to feel about visiting every single county and having eight meetings. Uh, it, it, it's not a... Uh, up to eight, Anne? I mean, think about I how... I don't care, up to something. Up to something. We're all up to something, so rather than a set amount, if you know you get an early snowstorm, or why I mean, don't we say an, a sufficient number of meetings not to exceed? Nah, nah, probes nah. won't like that. I know, I don't either. I don't like that either. They gotta budget it, and and it says that it couldn't be in person or remote. I mean. It does, but nevertheless, you know, there's notice that has to be given out mm -hmm. and the people who are keeping notes have to keep notes in between. Uh, if it's a, the Office of uh, Legal of Legislative Operations, these people are going to be working overtime. I mean, really hard, not easy to do what's done. Communicating with people about Zoom having a public hearing on Zoom is not simple. So I think that the, one of the things to think about is you have the first meeting of the task force happening by July. You have them considering a lot of things other than, uh, I mean, that number two, I think is really the kind of the hearing from the public part and maybe yeah. some of these other pieces, but how you see these, if there's gonna be, I don't know if you're gonna set a total number of meetings, but how you see the non-public hearing part of this group's work uh -huh. rolling out and how they, what their end product is supposed to be and how that relates to what they're doing in these other powers and duties and the okay. public hearings. I'm, I'm hearing what you're saying. I think the suggestion then would be, um, I, I still think July 1st is way too early. I mean, it could be August 15th. And that the, the meeting, that the, the task force shall uh, have an organizational meeting no later than uh, organizational meetings no later than August 15th. That, that gives folks an opportunity to get together and talk about um, what's coming next and doing some of that planning. And then the September 15th date would be the date by which uh, the task force would have public hearings up to, and then say up to six, it's possible that the task force may wanna meet two times before, and then the public hearings would be up to six. So that's eight meetings included. So a total of eight. Actually below under compensation and reimbursement, it does say for not more than 12 meetings. 
Yeah, good point. So you might want to, sorry, go ahead, Jen. No, I said that's a good point. Not more than, I don't know how any task force between in this time frame is going to meet 12 times unless there's a, a couple uh, uh, meetings in there that last an hour. You could be silent on a number of public meetings and just say compensation shall be given up to X meetings and then let them decide how many public meetings they want to have and how many non-public meetings they want to have. How does the committee feel about that suggestion? I mean, they're all public. Right? They're all public. Uh, public hearing. Right, it's the difference between the hearing, whether it whether right. it's to hear from the public or whether yeah. it's to right. discuss yeah. in public. Yeah, I think that sounds good. So shall, uh, and I agree with Senator Lyons that July first is too early. I'm I'm okay with August fifteenth, and then we the beginning on or before September fifth shall hold public hearings. Right, just be silent on mm. that. Fifteenth. Okay. I think. I just September. wonder. If August 15th is getting a little late, if you haven't formed the task force yet, maybe August 1st, make it a month rather than a month and a half. Um, between the time you're ordering and the time I'm, you have the first Having, having done some of this before, I think August 15th is really the time frame within which people are ready to get back and do things. Um, and wow. then uh, there's a whole month between August 15th and September 15th, the task force could meet two or three times, you know, I think probably meet a couple of times. If you have the honor before, you know, it doesn't have to be as late as whatever date you put. Yeah, you're so right. You're you right. could say, so if you said August 15th and people wanted yeah. to meet July 1st, that's yeah. still honor before yeah. August 15th. Yeah, that's good. That's good. So are you wanting a late, so do you want August 15th, 15th. in here? honor before right that's the last date that it should happen mm -hmm. right yeah okay. okay flag that as a change and then your public hearings <clears throat> then as i think nolan's comment about being silent on numbers but having a number of meetings for the task force overall mm -hmm. that gives some latitude so a couple of questions here. Do you want a beginning on or before a certain date? Does it matter when they decide to hold their, you know, do you want to not, this is sort of a, yeah. Well, that's... I guess it's beginning on or before, but yeah, you know, you don't necessarily need to specify a, a date, start date for that if you don't want. Committee, what do you think about that? I'm, I'm, I'm fine with the on or before. It, it kind of gives some structure but flexibility. Yeah. Either one. I don't okay. <laughs> okay, then leave that. Okay, but you want to take out the number? Yes. Do you want to keep the... And then, then instead of saying each in different Vermont counties, I don't... Uh, oh. I think it More gets meetings. difficult if you're thinking a lot of it's going to be remote because I know because <laughs> um, it's sort of, you know, held in the virtual we, world. What, what about saying something like uh, to hear from uh, Vermonters uh, from people across the state? And so I'm trying to figure out how to make it more about hearing from people rather than the county. Uh, how about hold public hearings in various regions of the state? Yeah, that's well, but about to hear from people in various regions of the state because it's also Zoom. Remember that it could be it could be Zoom. You could also again be silent on that, and if it's going to be Zoom, then maybe the committee may decide rather than regional. Each meeting has a specific focus, maybe on access, maybe on costs, maybe on you know what I mean so. Maybe if you don't dictate, you can let the committee decide how you want to. Well, if the, look if the if the uh, if it's in in different regions of the state, the committee can also uh, decide to take uh, to hear about different aspects, of different uh, parts of the charge. You're right. So I'm agreeing. I'm just with you. saying. So yeah, if like you're wanting it to reflect people from different, you know, I mean, I put in here hold public hearings to hear from Vermont residents from different regions of the state that. Uh, or you could say from from all across the state or from around the state. Um, maybe around the state is better. Um, I like around the state. 
So if you're just hearing from them from around the state, it doesn't specify where it has to be right. held. Yes. It's hard to it's hard to specify where it's going to be held and because it brings up a couple of problems. One, if it's Zoom, it's Zoom. You can't just you're not gonna travel to Montpelier to Zoom if you're not there. Uh, but the other the other issue is uh, if these are being held, then where are they being held? So there's some uh, logistical work to find a, a town meeting, a meeting place, a town hall or a school or something to hold meetings. That that requires some work. Okay. Well, so committee, uh, look at the language that Jen has just put up there. Right, so it just says, hold public hearings to hear from Vermont residents from around the state. I don't know if you wanna keep this to gather information from state. I mean, I think you may not need that gray highlighted yeah. piece. Yeah, we don't, we don't really need it. Is that, we just want, we do yeah. to take that out. Yeah. Yeah, let's just keep it simple. I'm, I'm in the, let's keep it simple. Like the Anne's, Anne, you should just come up with all the language. Just keep it simple. <laughs> all right. Do you want to keep public hearings I'm maybe simple. held in person or by remote means? Yes. Sounded like you did. Yeah. yeah. Do you um, want each public hearing to begin with a panel discussion involving task force members and local stakeholders selected by the task force? I, you know, I think that's a decision the task force can yeah, make. That may be that yeah. they don't want to start that way. <laughs> Yeah. And, uh, you know, they might, might do it that way once and then find out that it's not helpful. Uh, you know, so let's, so let's go wanna... to the Cummings. Let's go to the Cummings. Okay. Advice. Do you, do you want a summary of the findings from field hearings included as an appendix to the report? I do. I, that I think would be helpful. Just, yeah. yeah. And, you know, the summary could also be a recording. That's the other thing. Well, that's not a summary. I mean, that's I not was, a summary. That's a that's a verbatim. That's a bit non non written. That, yep. I so think let's some keep sort it of as summary, a, even if it's just a paragraph that says that the you know Addison County thing we heard this this and this kind of summary. It doesn't. We don't have to specify how it's summarized, but I think a summary of what is learned at these is is important to include in good. some form. Done. Then we have the assistance. Um, so hire a consultant to coordinate the task force's work. And then also the administrative, technical, and legal assistance from the Office of Legislative Operations, the Office of Legislative Council, and the Joint Fiscal Office. Yep. Then there's the findings and recommendations due by January 15th on the most cost-effective ways to expand access to affordable health care for Vermonters without health insurance and those facing high health care costs and the various options available to implement the recommendations. Is that what you want them to come back with? Sure. I, I, I you know, I don't see why not. That's fine. I'm just asking yeah. if this still Does anybody reflects. want them not to come back with something like this? Well, or something well, different. Is there something different? Yeah. I'm not hearing anything, so. Okay. Good. So the first meeting would occur now on or before August 15th. And the task force would select House and Senate co-chairs from among its members at its first meeting. And they'd alternate acting as chair at meetings. A majority of the membership constitutes a quorum and it ceases to exist on January 15th. Very good. All right, we have per diem compensation and reimbursement of expenses for not more than how many meetings? Eight. What do you think? I'm. I'm just. I just know what the time factor is Fine. here. What do you think, Senator Cummings? Eight is good. Eight's good. Whatever props will give us. <laughs> okay, go for it. Uh, well, it's built into the. 175,000 appropriation. It's already in 175. So that would change. Oh. Well, no, it, it, I don't think it has to. No, yeah. What did the house have if that's what they oh, put in? This, this is, should be. This, this is, this is uh, yours, Senator. There's no house bill. 
this is and uh, all right yeah nolan we i we need that's to right it it. the other one so legislative operations here as well not to the joint fiscal office yeah okay. i think eight is fine um i agree it's good and just so you know it'll be about if everybody went to every meeting and it would be about ten thousand dollars i think that can be captured within the 175 easily. okay okay so that's the end of your what task force language okay and then we get into the aco oh i can take this part out um we get into the aco data collection and analysis piece okay anything with that okay um then we have the pbm 340b language yeah so we got it, um in youtube request worlds a couple emails but one went to just center lions and me and one, oh, I haven't seen it yet. What is it? Yeah, no, that's okay. And one went to just me um, from Helen Laban and Devin Green, and they both both say more or less the same thing. So I can summarize for you <laughs> um, uh, that this is um, really about um, prescription. Uh, the, the pharmacies um, making the administrative costs more difficult for hospitals and clinics to participate in 340B, and then um, some prescription drug manufacturers um, refusing to provide any kind of discount under the program, um, and they name a specific pharmacy oversight that's doing it, which I won't talk about, but, um, it, and so this is to avoid private pharmacy um, uh, benefits pro managers from putting um, administrative burdens on the hospitals and the clinics who participate um, because it makes it harder for them to, to participate in the 340B program. So that's the sort of answer to the question I asked, which is what is the problem we're trying to solve? Um, and I can read the whole thing if you want, but that's kind of the basics. Is there, are we okay with that? It's really about PBMs. Love them. Senator Cummings, we can't hear you. No, just an aside comment. Okay, all right. My feelings for PBMs. Okay, we're good. All right, I'm so. Good, you couldn't hear me. <laughs> I can okay, imagine. So so we're, you're good with this language. We're, yep. we're set on this section. Yep. Okay. And we have the state health improvement plan with again, okay. putting in the commissioner. Yep. And then the next section has that, the commissioner submitting yep. copies and any updates in the timeline for adoption of a new state health improvement plan. I will note that the current state health improvement plan uh, covers 2019 to 2023. So I'm not sure I mean, I think they have made updates and I would expect that probably this next one would be to start for 2024. Right. Um, I just have it open. Um, all right, and then we have, uh, and I did take out that section on the auditor access, so, and I've renumbered the section. So uh, okay. if you were looking for things based on old numbers, that's why. Then we have the Green Mountain Care Board report on the health insurance administrative expense and how those increases have lined up with the consumer price index increases over the last five years. Then the ACO care coordination report and then um, the various primary care visit reports and the, the impacts of the individual and small group market and the large group market um, of, of implementing provisions like that. I'm thinking that that study might inform some of the reporting that the task force does. I mean, so there might be some benefit to having this study in place. Uh, 
that's all. Sure, and that I mean the task force could certainly ask ask for updates from these folks yeah. as they're doing the work. Yeah. Um, if they have any conclusions to share. And then we have the effective date. And so um, I'd left this in, highlighted in here in case you made changes to it. But if you're keeping that PBM language, um, then this would be an effective date. So it would take effect on January 1st and apply to contracts entered into or renewed after that. You could probably have it take effect on you know July 1st of this year and apply to all contracts, as, as long as it's prospective. Okay. Not making changes. Yeah. That, I think that makes sense. Not uh, sure there's a particular reason other than uh, Utah's was a January 1st, so I lined yeah. it up, but I don't think that needs to be that way since it's all, whoops, all forward looking. Okay. All right. Cut out and out. And then we just need a new title. Okay. This is a quiz. Is this a task force on the access and affordability to healthcare or what? Another miscellaneous subjects. Yes. You want a miscellaneous, miscellaneous healthcare subjects? No, we, uh, no, no, we do I want think a we task, want the task force. Okay. Huh? I think we want the task force. That's. Yes. Part of that purpose the... is to let people know we are still working on health care. Right. Um, health care, no, we called it, I have to go back up to the top. Task Force on Affordable Accessible Health Care. Task Force on Affordable Accessible Health Care. Um, do you want, is it just that or do you want another health care provisions or something? And related health care provisions. Not? I don't know if it's really, if they're and related, related, but. And uh, other health care. Other health care provisions. Great. <laughs> Put this on the next page. Oh, good. All right. Okay. So, um, committee, that, thank you, Jen. This looks really, uh, uh, we've made some long steps. I was going to say strides, but big steps. Um, so committee, the, the question that, that Senator Hooker raised earlier was, is this a committee bill or is it a, a S1, want to keep it as S120, you want to move it to committee bill? I don't know what the distinction will be when we pass it out. I know that Senate Finance had luck with, committee with their bill. committee bill. But. Has S120 already been through rules or not until you voted out? Not until we voted out. Once so we vote the, the bill, same either way. Huh? Yeah. It's the same either way. So. I don't think it matters. And S120 has the other senators on it. So they may want to stay on the bill. Um, well, I'm not on the bill. Right. I and mean, neither is Senator Terenzini. So the question is, do you want us to be on the bill? I'm agnostic, actually. So if you guys want to be take it forward, that's fine. I don't care if, I think whatever's easier, if it's easier to have it as a committee bill, then let's do that. I'm fine with a committee bill. Uh, Senator Terenzini, do you want to be, uh, uh, have this be uh, as a committee bill? Are you okay with it that way? I'm, I'm fine either way, Senator Lyons. I'm, I'm gonna support the bill. So if, if my name's on it or not, it doesn't matter to me. However, you know, we as a, yeah, no, as a committee bill, it's a committee bill. So there are no names on it and it does make it a little bit more, I would say compelling to take it up when it's a committee bill. Whatever you feel I'm fine with, uh, committee sounds great. Sure. Okay, let's do it. Jen, can we just do that? Okay. Uh, I, I'll need to get it processed as a committee bill you know i have to get a request number and all that but i need to have it edited anyway so okay yeah so yes it's it's easy enough for me it's just going to be a copy and paste all right i just have to write a um state the do the summary the statement of purpose part based on what's in it that would well, be simple to, i'm sorry will it have to go through onto the floor and then back to us and then back to the floor kind yeah. of thing? No, but it won't. It just won't get introduced until we've done all of that I see. part of it. Okay. Can we 
it'll go right to rules. It will, I think it will go right to rules. That's true. And then, and then it will go to appropriations. And then anyway. it will go to appropriations. And uh, theoretically, the 175 will already be in the big bill. Um, so it, since it is a one-time thing, it, and it, it's not general fund yeah. dollars, it might actually be a good thing. Okay. All right, Jen, so this then is the committee bill with the title that you just put in. Yes. Um, anything else we need to do on this bill? I think I've remembered all the, the oh, I do have one other thing. <laughs> so we sent our letter with hearing aid language on the DFR. And I think, Nolan, do you know if that made it into the budget? The hearing aid or Jen, do you know if our hearing aid DFR language uh, for benchmark plans made it into the budget? Uh, I don't know. I don't know either. What, is there any value in putting that language into this bill? I mean, suppose it's not included in the budget and we, we keep hearing about how important hearing aids are and please pass the language that's in S-132. Uh, no question that if something doesn't happen, we're going to see that bill in our committee again or in Senator Cummings' committee on hearing aids. So the question is, do we want to, Jen, how is it, can we just add the language in this bill? Sure. And then the question is, should we do that? We can, so should we? And so really what you'd be doing is, is making sure that the legislative priorities for what gets looked at, including hearing aids and those other items um, is part of the benchmark plan review and then having the report come back to you. So that would be the- Yes. The, the rationale. Yes. That's fine. Uh, so, and it's kind of belts and suspenders. Uh, of course, when the bill goes to appropriations, they can take they can take the belt away or the suspenders away. But sure, I can certainly add it's that. Fine with me. It would include the whole list, though, right, Jen? Right. The same language we I'm, have. I'm yes, I am. I just copied mm -hmm. it out of the uh, memo, and I'm going to paste it into here. So that exactly. that's exactly what you've seen before. Okay, that's good. That one, uh, that one's been bothering me a little bit because I just think it's so important to people. Um, I guarantee we're going to hear about hearing aids going forward, mm -hmm. and the task force is going to hear about mm -hmm. hearing aids going forward. It's one of the things the federal government could do. Just really do a lot. <laughs> All right. Okay, I will be putting it in as a new section 10 and making section 10, section 11. Okay, so I will turn this into a committee bill um, and have it edited and send it around to all of you. I should be able to send that around to you hopefully later today if that works. So the question is, do you want to vote on the bill pending our uh, review when Jen sends it around? We can do that. We have done that in the past. And then if there's a concern about the bill, we can probably get back together. Um, I think the budget's not going out till Tuesday. Is that right, Nolan? Do you know? I thought it was today. I did. We're voting it today, but I think the work is happening to sort of put it all together over the weekend. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so we let let's do let's I think we probably should vote on it then and uh, uh and then woo. Then it goes to rules. Okay. I'll have to deal with where it goes to and how it's handled and check in with the pro tem about that. So I'm um, so so. Shall we vote then? I'm not seeing anyone say no. Don't vote. And then, Jen, when you send this around to us, if somebody, if there's a big glitch, uh, we can we can come back. 
We've done that before, I think. Okay, mm -hmm. committee. Mm -hmm. Hello. Yes. So, so do you need a motion to uh -huh. take? I the need vote? a motion to pass the committee bill entitled, and I leave it okay. to you to remember the title. Um. Hmm. Task for the task force on affordable and accessible health care and other health. Care related, related. No, no other, just health no, no related. Other, You're right. Oh. And other healthcare topics, provisions, provisions. We okay. can what, whatever you want. Whatever the legalese is. Yeah. Good work. Okay. Okay. Is that a motion? Yes. Discussion. It was. Ooh. Okay. Thank you all. This has been a real help. This, this has actually been kind of good, I think, for us to do this. It's been great. And I think that the task force is an excellent idea. Uh, and going out and hearing people is going to be terrific. Let's hope it um, gets all the way through the process. Yeah. Okay. So. Do we need a vote? Any other? Any other? Senator Terenzini. <laughs> One more time. Okay, uh, at this time I'll call the uh, roll. Uh, myself, yes. Senator Hooker? Yes. Senator Cummings? Yes. Senator Hardy? Yes. Senator Lyons? Yes. Five zero zero. thanks. All right, so that's good. Um, and I know that, um, who would like to report this? Um, I didn't hear you, Senator. I think Senator Hooker should, or okay. Senator Hardy should report this one. Yeah, I do too. So Senator Hooker, why don't you report it? And you're also reporting 430. And H46. I'll take H46 off your hands. Okay. And I'll let you do both of those. Unless, right. and you, and well, that's good. Okay. Thank you. So H46, can you send me what Katie sent you? Uh, the, yeah, she the sent final the clean copy. Yeah. Okay. Nellie, so we're good on all these things. Everybody has really pitched in and worked hard. And uh, Senator Hardy, you've worked super hard on some of these bills and Most really good. appreciate that. Um, My pleasure. Yeah, I'm so it, proud of us for voting out all of these bills today. It's really amazing. <laughs> Thank you, Jen, for all of your work. It's good. So um, I'm looking. Hang on a second. Okay, so here's here's Nellie. I have a request for Nellie for each one of us. I'll, I'll send Nellie a list of the bills that you are each reporting and that I'm reporting and ask her to get you a, a witness list for the bills. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then <clears throat> you should be receiving a clean copy from Jen or Katie. And Nolan, if you have, I know you have, uh, can get the fiscal notes off uh, on these. Maybe just send them to Nellie and have her post them. And then we can each pick up the ones that relate to the bills that we're reporting. Yeah, I'll have them all done by Monday. Perfect. We have met our principal criterion of finishing early. Uh, Jen and Nolan, thank you. You have both been extremely helpful in our deliberations. Uh, really very much appreciate your work. We are so lucky. So lucky. Thank you. Yeah. So um, committee, we finished early. It's been a pleasure. So next week we do have some more work and we're gonna have some things on our agenda uh, to look at uh, on, on Thursday next. We are meeting jointly with judiciary. I think you saw the note yesterday, both Senator Sears and I asked um, to have this, uh, Commissioner Levine's testimony from the House 
that it's actually when they first took up the issue of buprenorphine, and it's really a, it's almost a legalization, but you should look at H225. Um, did I send that around to you yet? No. Okay. I'll send that to you. We're, we're going to look at 225 with judiciary. The bill will be in judiciary, but it does have, uh, there are implications around uh, clinical medical treatment, addiction in particular, and the role that buprenorphine may or may not play in addiction. But again, um, holding people, uh, making, making it illegal for younger people to hold a certain amount of buprenorphine. So we will look at that. We'll have testimony uh, from the, the medical side and the counseling side and judicial side. And it will be really a focus on the judicial questions, the legal questions, but it's important for us to be there and then to weigh in on whatever happens to that bill. Go ahead. Madam Chair, did the, the, the bill get through rules? I, I'm not sure whether it's through okay. rules yet or not. Um, not but yet. It's still there, but if and okay. when it comes out, it will be in judiciary. Okay, and we are hearing testimony from various groups. It's yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. That's the that that's the whole point of our meet our joint meeting next week is to hear some testimony. The bill has come over late, but there are a lot of uh, people who believe that this will help with the. Um, perception around uh, addiction as a medical issue. And so we'll hear from, we'll hear that perspective. Okay. And then we have appointments. So we'll do that next week too. Okay. Uh, that's you. good. I'll see Thanks you next week. Everybody.